lot of news to catch up on today. Hi, folks. Welcome to another edition here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Greg Sykes. Thank you for joining us. If you're new here, thank you for stumbling across this channel. Um, I try to put out videos as much as possible. Not as much during the off season, although there's a lot of news to cover, especially today. So with that, let, let's just go ahead and jump into the news, shall we? So starting off, we're talking about Dan Snyder now. Snyder, he continues to frustrate the NFL owners, and that is not a good thing if you're an NFL owner, right? Or soon to be ex NFL owner, which is probably the case of Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder, now he's trying to play these games with the, the bidders, right? So first we heard this report that all of the bids came north of $7 billion. This was the first piece of news that we heard and outstanding news for the Snyders, right? We had multiple bids that came in they're all north of $7 billion. Man, this thing is going to get done fast. And then there were reports after that that refuted that initial report, saying that the bids were not nearly as high. They were more along the lines of the mid $6.3, $6.5 billion range. And they were nowhere near the $7 billion range that Dan Snyder had hoped for. And then we started seeing some reports of some of the bidders dropping out, uh, mainly because, well, they also have to throw in another extra couple of billion dollars for a stadium. Now, it's not like that they didn't realize that going in, uh, but just the simple fact that if Snyder is trying to up the bid on the team itself, well, you know, these bidders, they didn't get to be multi-millionaires and billionaires for nothing, right? I mean, they can call a spade a spade, and they can see when this is not a good deal. And, you know, paying that much money for the commanders and then having to turn around and build this multi-billion dollar stadium, on top of the fact that the team itself has been losing revenue on ticket sales for the past several years this is an organization that is struggling right now so you know snyder's trying to get as much as he possibly can out of it but he's he's now he's starting to frustrate some of the other nfl owners you know he's of course he, he tried to go into this thing with blocking jeff bezos from bidding and honestly you can't you can't block any bidders from bidding on this. Just Snyder can say, hey, I'm just not going to sell the team. Of course, he's going to be forced to, but he can't really block any of the bidders from bidding on the team. That that part is kind of ridiculous, and it was really just an attempt on his move to try to up the bid. Um, so we see here, you know, of course... Um, both Jeff Bezos and the Houston Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta, Fertitta, I think is his last name, have interest, they expressed interest in the Washington Commanders. Of course, you know, we have others as well. Snyder has reportedly threatened to sue the NFL and its owners if his request of, in, this is early in the morning for me, indefamication isn't granted leading to talks of simply voting him out of his ownership per anonymous source who spoke to the Washington Post. His demands have been labeled ridiculous and absurd by those sources. If Snyder refuses to sell, the other owners would definitely... Now, this is not possibly, but this is definitely move closer to voting Snyder out of his ownership, something that would have to be done by three-fourths of the league's owners. I don't think that you would be hard-pressed to find enough owners to vote Dan Snyder out. On top of looking to absolve himself of any legal or financial issues stemming 
from his ownership, Snyder is additionally looking for the NFL to keep the results of the ongoing investigation to himself and to the team's workplace environment confidential. <clears throat> of course, it talks about Mary Jo White's investigations, uh, the request files in the face of the NFL's public statement that the attorney Mary Jo White's investigation findings will be made public. The NFL has said before that they would make those findings public. However, we're yet to, to really know when they are actually going to make those public. I think they're just waiting for their opportunity. And Daniel Snyder seems to be getting closer to that opportunity of forcing them to show the results of the investigation. So for all of those folks out there who are thinking, well, that's it, you know, Dan Snyder, of course, he's going to be owner for the rest of, you know, this was all a farce and all that. Let, let's, let's pump your brakes. Dan Snyder is out. Now, he's not officially out, but for all intents and purposes, Dan Snyder has checked out. I mean, for one thing, neither him nor Tanya showed up to Sonny Jurgensen's uh, send-off, basically, his, his ceremony in that last game. I mean, Jurgensen is probably one of the most popular, most important figures of the Washington franchise. And you as an owner don't show up. What does that tell you? Uh, the other thing, uh, those parking places for the ownership was empty last week when Eric Bieniemy, probably one of the most important hires for the Washington Commanders this off season, you know he's there to to have his press conference. Ownership is not there, so ownership is checked out. Believe me, Daniel Snyder is going to sell this team, but he is just trying to do what he can to up the value. The problem is he's inadvertently going to wind up lowering the value of this team. At this point, he may be lucky if he gets mid a $5 billion range. I mean, my goodness, we're talking about billions of dollars. And that's still more than what the record selling of the Denver Broncos was at 4.6. But, you know, Snyder wants to go out with a bang and... It may be, it may not be the bang that he hopes for, certainly. It, it, it may not be. And I think he just needs to be careful with, with this. He needs to accept what, what they're giving him, get out of town, and, and let this franchise heal. Um, speaking of getting out of town, Commanders released quarterback Carson Wentz. Now, they also released Bobby McCain as well yesterday. Uh, but this news came yesterday afternoon. Uh, Bobby McCain and Carson Wentz both have been released from the Washington Commanders. Uh, no surprise there. Um, it's probably no surprise for Bobby McCain with the emergence of uh, Derek Forrest, who really played well when he was in there. I think you can go with the youth movement, and I think that it's time for Forrest to really prove that he is he is the guy to take over in that spot. So Bobby McCain, I wish you well. I think he'll get picked up somewhere else. But now Carson Wentz is, is the question. What's going to happen with Carson Wentz? Because, you know, since he has left Philadelphia, it's been tumultuous for him, right? I mean, you know, he had one year in Indy, one year in Washington, and now what's going to happen with him? You don't get too many opportunities. Now, he's definitely not going to get another starting gig here in the NFL, uh, maybe a backup gig somewhere is, is more or less likely for him. He may get that, but, I mean, he just was not, he just wasn't a very good quarterback this year. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Carson. I mean, you know, as far as a guy, I think he's a great guy. You know, we got to look at these these people as individuals, individual people, you know, uh, Carson Great family guy. Um, I think he had high character values and things like that, but I think the game just was a short-lived thing for him. Unfortunately, you know, he had his best years early on 
with Philadelphia. And then after, you know, it's kind of the same same story that happens with a lot of potential outstanding players. They get a bad injury, you know, the ACL injury. They're never really the same after that. I don't know if it does something to the psyche, but I think that's part of the reason why the commanders have played it so safe with Chase Young is the fact that that's an injury that's hard to come back from. And uh, so, you know, Carson Wentz is out, and we can officially now talk about moving forward at quarterback. We know that Carson Wentz is not going to be a factor. It's going to be Sam Howes, the number one quarterback going in. We don't know if he's going to be the number one quarterback at all come, you know, start of the season. It's likely, uh, but he is the number one quarterback going into training camp. But we still have not went through drafting, free agency, and all that stuff. I imagine we will pick up a free agent quarterback. We may try to re-sign Taylor Heineke. I would love for us to keep Heineke on the team. But there's other teams right now who are interested in Taylor Heineke. And, you know, you want him to be able to certainly have a good career. If he has an opportunity to start, you want Heineke to be able to start. But as of right now, it's definitely it is definitely not going to be Carson Wentz. But I tell you who is possibly going to come back. I say possibly because there's still always that chance for a tag and trade. Is Commander's defensive tackle, Deron Payne. He got tagged. Tagged. You're it. We knew it was coming. We knew he was going to get the tag. Um, Deron Payne tagged. Now we have some time to see if a deal is going to be worked out. The Payne's projected to make $18.937 million on this tag. Wow. So the man's getting paid. Uh, and the Washington Commanders were actually the first team in the NFL to deploy the franchise tag this offseason. Um, the club did so earlier Tuesday morning, and this was early, early, like this was during the middle of the night, announcing that they have tagged star defensive tackle Deron Payne, and under the tag, Payne is projected to make roughly $18.9 million, fully guaranteed for the 2023 season. This move was an expected one from Washington, who cleared significant cap space on Tuesday following the release of quarterback Carson Wentz. The deadline for the team to use the franchise tag was March 7th. Otherwise, Payne would have become an unrestricted free agent. And now that the tag has been placed on Payne, the commanders have until July 17th to sign him to a long-term deal. And once the deadline passes, however, the team will not be able to negotiate with him on a contract until after the 2023 season. Because this is not the exclusive franchise tag, Payne can also negotiate with other teams along with the commanders. If he agrees to a contract with another club, Washington would have the right to first refusal. If they decide to let him go, Payne's new team would have to send the commanders two first-round picks as compensation or work out some other agreement. So there you go. So it wasn't the uh, non-exclusive, or I should say, uh, I'm probably telling you. Yeah, this is not the exclusive franchise tag, meaning Payne is free to still negotiate with other teams. So if he finds another deal... That suits him better, and the commanders decide not to refuse that offer, then they can let him go, and they'll re- they will receive two first-round picks for Deron Payne. So it's a win-win either way you go about it. You know, we're either going to have Deron Payne for the 2023 season uh, playing on the tag, which is likely, or we'll sign him to a deal. It will probably be the highest paid defensive tackle in the league. Or he's going to go with another team. And it really all depends on what does Ron Payne want to do. Does he want to stay in Washington? Does he want to see all these changes come through? Does, does he want to continue 
to be a major part of this nucleus on the defensive front? Or does he want to go somewhere else, get paid? Who knows where that place is going to be? You know, maybe it's a place where the playoffs is not quite as prominent. Not, not that it's been very prominent in Washington, but we feel like things are looking up. So who knows? Who knows? I, I think um, overall, should Ron Payne decide to move on, we still have Fedorian Mathis. Hopefully he is ready to go and healthy for the 2023 season. And hopefully he will be a good, uh, you know, hopefully he will be an outstanding replacement for Deron Payne. And if he is, then it's a win-win for the commanders. There's a lot of ifs in this, but Mathis can come in and, and produce for us. We lose to Ron Payne. We get two first-round picks. The commanders are set up pretty nicely. So let's see what happens with all that. Folks, a lot of news today. Um, I couldn't put out a video yesterday. Um, I was in the hospital over the weekend with uh, diverticulitis. Stuff is no joke. I'm still getting over it. Um, so I just was not, uh, I was in, the, I was just not right to do a video yesterday. I was still in a lot of pain. So um, forgive me for this video being extremely long. There's a lot to cover. I want to cover it all in this video. So thank you if you've made it this far. You are probably one of the all-star supporters of this channel. I appreciate you to death. Uh, you just don't know. Um, and I would say that uh, for you folks who have on the fence about supporting this channel, uh, I've got many ways. Number one, you can subscribe. That is totally free. You can subscribe to this channel. Uh, the other thing you can do, you can visit my Etsy page. Um, it's called MV Artwork. Um, and I now since this, I've, I've sold some sales. So uh, there you go. I, I've got Washington Commanders mugs. Um, I've got, you know, house banners, um, for multiple teams. Yes. Even those stinking Cowboys, I got them for the, them. I've also got them for the world champions as well. Uh, so check that out. Um, <laughs> Red Wolves, because you know, why not? I even have something for, uh, the Red Hogs as well, because with a change of ownership, you don't know, there could be a brand change. There could be, um, I've got music. Uh, T-shirts, got stuff for kids, um, but I've got tremendous wall art. I love the wall art, you know, um, abstract metal, sur surreal artwork stuff um, for just stuff for everybody. So check it out. It, it is mvartwork.com. Well, not .com. I'm sorry. Ah, it's, it's Etsy. It is Etsy. Etsy.com. Envy artwork, look it up. I also got links on my uh, YouTube page. Just go there, click on it. See something you like. Um, you support me, you support this channel, and you get something cool in return. Folks, thank you for watching this video. Um, leave a like in the comments. Sec well, leave a comment, leave a like. Uh, share this video out with your buddies. With that said, I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.